Hello, this is Al, K0CN, and I'm back again with this, the first of what I hope will be a collection of videos about the Flex 6000 series radios. Several months ago, I switched to the Flex radio and have been really impressed with its performance and capabilities. So my plan is to share my enthusiasm by making several short videos showing various functions and features. I hope you'll find them interesting and useful. The Flex 6000 series radio uses Smart SDR as its operating software. The screen on your computer, which is connected to the Flex radio, is your human interface. It presents you with visual information from the powerful computer inside the Flex radio and allows you to control the features and functions by interacting with the screen. When you look at your monitor, the first thing you see is the pan adapter, which is the upper portion of the screen and is the display of a portion of the RF radio spectrum above and below your tuned frequency. The grid on the display is graduated in megahertz horizontally and signal strength minus dBm vertically. Minus dBm is a measure of signal strength in decibels below one milliwatt. In an SDR receiver such as this, there's a device called a spectral capture unit or SCU. Each SCU collects all the signal information over a wide portion of the RF spectrum, many gigabytes of data per second. The computer inside the flex radio takes a slice of this data and converts it into usable information such as specific frequency, peaks on the pan adapter, a waterfall trace, and audio signals to drive your speaker. The SDR radio allows us to process this digital signal information, DSP, in a much more efficient manner than the traditional superheterodyne receiver. In the middle of the pan adapter, we see a slice receiver, which is tuned to a specific frequency, much like the VFO of a superhet receiver. This frequency is indicated by the yellow line on the side of the blue column. This light blue vertical column represents the bandwidth of the receiver, and any peak on the pan adapter that falls inside the column will be heard as part of the received signal. Any peak outside of the column will not be heard. This is your receiver selectivity. At the top of the column is the flag. The flag for each slice receiver gives us information about the slice or allows us to make adjustments. For example, we see the receive frequency, an S meter reading, and controls for bandwidth, for mode, and other options. Below the pan adapter is the waterfall. This is found on the bottom portion of the window and is a time-based display of the intensity of each signal on the pan adapter. The more intense the color on the waterfall, the stronger the signal. We tune the radio by moving the slice receiver back and forth across the pan adapter. If we see a peak and want to hear the signal, we position the slice receiver over that peak and we'll hear the audio. We'll look more closely at tuning in a later video clip. Now let's look around the screen at the major control features we find on this interface. First, we see the remote button and the master volume controls on the upper right hand corner. The remote button allows us to operate the radio remotely, for example, using a laptop or a notepad over your Wi-Fi network. More on that option on a later video. Next, we see a series of control boxes on the right side of the window. The first box has RF power and SWR meters. It also has a slider which allows you to control the transmitter RF output and the tune power settings. This is also where you find the button to tune your transmitter and activate the auto tuner. The next box has a mic gain and compression level meter and allows you to make adjustments to your compression level and also the monitor level. The next box has controls for AM carrier Vox and downward expander, and high and low cutoffs for your transmit audio. Next is the receive box, and here we have a number of controls including the frequency readout, the receive bandwidth, XIT and RIT controls, and passband tuning and more. Finally, we find an 8-band audio equalizer. This audio lets you set your TX and RX receive audio profiles. Next, we move to the bottom right corner where we see the Wi-Fi network strength indicator and the transmit indicator. Next, we'll move to the bottom left corner where we find a cluster of controls. First, a magnifying glass, which allows us to zoom in and out. 
You can zoom out to see a larger piece of RF spectrum or zoom in to look at a smaller segment. Useful when looking at the audio from a receive signal or adjusting your audio equalizer. Next is a control that allows you to add a new pan adapter. You can run more than one pan adapter depending on the radio model you have. This allows you to look at two or more bands at once, a really nice feature for contesting, or just knowing when a band is opening up. Next are three controls, the first enabling your tunable notch filter, the next a CWX control opens your CW memory keyer, and finally an FDX control allows you to operate in full duplex. This final option is great for adjusting your transmit audio profile using your audio equalizer. The upper left hand corner we see a series of controls for the receiver. First is the Plus RX, which allows us to add a second slice receiver. This is used similar to running split with VFO-A and VFO-B on a traditional radio. You can receive on one or both slices at the same time. You can have two slices at once on the Flex 6300, four slices on the 6500, and eight slices on the 6700. Next is a control for adding a tunable notch filter. The tunable notch filter can be adjusted for frequency, width, and depth, and turns out to be a very useful filter. Next comes the band selector. This will allow you to jump to any band from 160 through 6 meters, and there are other band options available on some flex radio units. Next is the ANT control, and this allows you to select your antenna input and also adjust the RF gain. The display control offers options for screen display. You can adjust the color, the speed of the waterfall, and other display items. Finally is the DAX or digital audio exchange control. This allows you to route audio to other programs or devices without the need for external sound cards. Well that's it. That's a quick spin around the Flex Radio Smart STR computer screen. In upcoming videos, I plan to look at these controls and features in more detail. Until then, 73 from Al, and thanks for watching.